With Hunger Games hype buzzing because of the new movie, let's take this moment to look at the Pan Am guards known as Peacekeepers. They have a rich history in the original series and also in the prequel novel that will definitely be good to know before seeing the new movie. We of course saw Peacekeepers in the new trailer, and you can already see how their uniforms change over the 60 plus years before the original series. If you enjoy this video, hit that like button, it will greatly help the channel with the algorithm. And if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button, and you can also follow me on my socials, all of that is linked down below. Now, let's get the video started. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Hunger Games! We'll start with the first topic. What are Peacekeepers? Well, Peacekeepers are a smaller part of the military force for the capital and the country of Pan Am. They were originally led by President Ravenstill, the president that was in place before, during, and after the dark days where the districts tried to rise up. Peacekeepers were a very important part of his presidency as it maintained order, especially as he helped form the Hunger Games. During the original series, Peacekeepers took direct orders from Coriolanus Snow, the president of the country at that point. The Peacekeepers' main jobs was a combination of military and law enforcement based on the orders given to them by the President, and they dealt with criminals, rebels, and dissidents, as well as served as the capital's foot soldiers and air force. Next question, where do Peacekeepers come from? Peacekeepers can be recruited from either the capital, normally from the less wealthy capital families, or more often than not, they're taken from the most loyal of the 12 districts, District 2. District 2 is not only closer to the capital allegiance-wise, but also distance-wise, as they're both located in the Rocky Mountains of what was formerly America. Because so many Peacekeepers came from District 2, the Peacekeepers training facility is located in that district, and that's also where their weapons are manufactured as well. Now, that's not to say that other districts can't be Peacekeepers as well though. If individuals from other districts prove themselves loyal to the capital, they can leave their district and serve Pan Am, but this is pretty rare. This does happen though because there is a strict rule that no peacekeeper can be assigned to their own district. So all of District 2's peacekeepers that maintain order there are either from other districts or they're from the capital. So why do people want to become peacekeepers? Most in District 2 do it for either honor or because they don't want to follow their district's industry of becoming masonry workers. On top of that, if they join, they are promised food and compensation for themselves and their families, which is another big motivator. As for the capital citizens that join, their reasons are a bit more desperate. Most capital citizens would never dare set foot in any of the 12 districts, which they would obviously have to do to train because, as I said, the training facility for peacekeepers is in District 2. There are some oddballs, however, as some capital citizens join for honor and glory for their country, but most do it because they're in some kind of trouble. A lot of capital citizens who have large debts join to have those debts absolved in exchange for their service. Other times, the capital will use this as punishment, which is exactly what happened to the current president, President Snow, along with his friend Sejanus. Sejanus was technically a citizen of District 2 before his family moved to the capital, but I'd still say he was a capital citizen at the time of his punishment because he had lived there for a decade prior. But those two are a prime example of the capital punishing their citizens by making them join the peacekeepers ranks. Now, what is being a peacekeeper like? They start their rigorous military training in District 2, and there they learn to fight, learn about different weapons as well as how to use them, and they get into amazing shape before being deployed. They move around from the different recruitment stations using the capital's vehicles such as their hovercrafts, their trucks and ground vehicles, and their trains. Each peacekeeper is obliged to serve a term of 20 years, and during that term of service, they are forbidden to marry or have children. Once deployed, the peacekeepers do exactly what their name says. They keep the peace. However, they can sometimes be pretty corrupt and actually cause more harm than peace. There are also different ranks of peacekeepers, as officers were normally the ones who commanded a fleet or a group of lower ranked peacekeepers. They received great privileges for being ranked higher, but it was difficult to get to this level. You have to take the officer candidate test, which was considered quite challenging. It measured scholastic aptitude, had a verbal section, a math section, a section about spatial problems, and most of all, a military section going over all the rules and regulations you have to know as a peacekeeper. But as hard as the test is, it's even harder to be able to take the test. To even get in the room for the exam, you had to have graduated from a secondary school such as the academy, which pretty much only capital residents were able to do, and perhaps a select few from District 2 who were granted access to the capital schooling system like Sejanus was. On top of that, if you did somehow pass the test, you are not guaranteed to become an officer right away. 
it only grants you the access to begin training to become an officer. When Coriolanus Snow was younger, he took the test and passed with flying colors, becoming the youngest to ever pass. In fact, he ranked so high on the test that they actually skipped the officer training, instead sending him to an elite program in District 2. However, before he got there, he was taken back to the capital where he was instead enrolled in university, and after that, he eventually became an apprentice game maker for the Hunger Games, and this is what started his political career that would make him president and make him be the leader of all peacekeepers. Obviously, most don't have this luxury, so only the smartest and most educated peacekeepers are able to become officers. So what are the peacekeepers specific duties? Well, their main job is to make sure nobody disrespects the capital or the rules the capital has established. If they do, they arrest and oftentimes punish the wrongdoers. Punishments could range from being put in jail to whippings to cutting people's tongues out and the most extreme executions. It often depends on the district though. For example, a large district like Eleven has to have very strict and ruthless peacekeepers to maintain peace. We saw this when they executed the old man during the victory tour in Catching Fire. Meanwhile, in the poorest and smallest district, District 12, they're much more lenient, constantly letting the black market be run with no problems, even though it broke all sorts of capital rules. This also varies with who's in charge of the districts, as Cray, the head peacekeeper of 12, was very lax. However, he mysteriously went missing during the events of Catching Fire, hinting that he was arrested and most likely punished for being too lenient, and he was replaced with Romulus Thread, who was much more brutal as we saw with the whipping, and also the many executions he carried out in the book. Districts 1 and 2, who were more loyal to the capital than a lot of other districts, also had more lax security, but this was mainly because they caused less problems, which in turn granted them more luxuries courtesy of the capital. Some other peacekeeper duties include piloting the capital's vast fleet of hovercrafts, which are used for both transportation, which I mentioned earlier, for surveillance to find fugitives, which we saw with Darius and Lavina, both of whom were scooped up by a hovercraft in a brutal way, and they do the same for the dead tributes in the Hunger Games, they beam them up to the hovercrafts. The hovercrafts can also be used for combat. They hold bombs, which we saw them use on District 12 at the end of Catching Fire, as well as on District 4's Hospital and on District 13 in Mockingjay. Peacekeeper's jobs of course became very difficult when the rebellion started brewing. On the night that PETA proposed to Katniss, the citizens of District 8 decided to start an uprising and were able to temporarily take control of their own district. However, this was put to a stop when the capital sent in reinforcements. Because Katniss was the spark that started the rebellion, peacekeepers had orders to beat Cinna right in front of her as her punishment, knowing there was nothing she could do as she was entering the arena for the third quarter quell. Peacekeepers were also the main foes that the rebels encountered in battle, and many peacekeepers lost their lives, but many also took the lives from the rebels' ranks as well. After the battle of the capital where the rebels won the war, peacekeepers were completely disbanded. In the new government, many of the peacekeepers were tried, and some were even executed for what they did over the years. I imagine that Romulus Thread was among those that got a more severe punishment. The new government scrapped the capital's peacekeeper program, took down the training facilities in District 2, and most likely started their own police force free of the capital's influence. Peacekeepers are so interesting in this series, because they're not all bad, but they're not all good. They were all loyal soldiers to the capital and merely carried out the orders they were given, some more loosely than others as we saw, whether that was good or bad, but they were an intricate part of the story told over the course of the four Hunger Games books. Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Instagram to see more of my personal life like my cute dog Loki and some behind the scenes movie flame stuff. I also do similar content on TikTok and Twitter that I do here on this channel, so if you like what I do here, check them out. All the handles are right below me and links are in the description. Over here are my wonderful patrons. If you want to be featured on the next video, plus get a few other perks, become a patron today. As always, if you like the video, hit that like button and subscribe and look out for more great movie flame videos on the way.